Hello everyone, welcome back to Not Another White Box. My name is Cameron and I'm here to give you a very long overdue update, I think, on my 1959 Sprite Aerial Project Caravan. Now, I started this project back in March 2020 at the start of the first lockdown, which England had. We're now on the third, so let's see, maybe this time we can finish the project and beat COVID, who knows? <laughs> Um, it's been five months since my last video and as I explained in that video we have moved house and we've bought a total project house you know no kitchen bathroom nothing because I obviously have tons of time for all these projects that I keep getting <laughs> so uh, unfortunately the little sprite has taken a back seat for a while and um, I keep opening the curtains in the morning from the bedroom and seeing it in the garden looking a bit sorry for itself so I decided after Christmas, I was going to have a little bit of a break from the house and crack on with the caravan. And in my last two videos, I've been kind of shot in amongst the turmoil of moving. So um, I've done a lot of recaps and showing you how the projects evolved. So I'm not going to do that for a third time, but if you've not been watching from the start and you want a quick five minute reminder of what I've done so far with the project, I've put the link to my last video below and hopefully it will appear here um, if the YouTube fairies do their work properly and um, you can have just a five minute reminder of what the project has been like so far. So in today's video we're going to pick up where we left off and um, we're on with the final push now, the interior fitting and lots of little jobs which seem to take a long time but they all just add up and with each one the caravan seems to move massively forward. So um, yeah, let's see where we're at with the Project Caravan. I'm going to start today's video by talking about the interior of the caravan. And as you've seen in the recap or you know from following the channel, that uh, the exterior is pretty much finished now uh, apart from a few bits on the chassis. Unfortunately when we moved house I had to quickly do some bits on the chassis just to make the caravan um, safe to tow and unfortunately I didn't have time to film them so I'm hoping maybe in a couple of months time I can go back pull apart the wheel hubs again and a few bits and pieces just to show you how it's done hopefully. <laughs> so um, that enabled, the, that enabled the caravan to be towed safely to the new house and um, really it's a case of getting on with the interior. And to start with, I've been doing things like the D-shaped mouldings which go around all the um, panel joins. These are actually original. Sprite used these extensively in all their caravans from the very start of Sprite right through to about 19... 70, 71 when they changed to plastic and the D-shaped mouldings um, are very easy to buy. They are just um, soft wood planed into a D-shape, hence the name, and then they're stained to match the interior furniture. So I was able to buy some of these and you cannot believe how much strength they give the caravan. Once they're fitted they really suck the side panel into one and um, I had a very slight curve on the offside wall because there's no kitchen in place or anything to hold it in and the d-shaped molding alone brought it back into being perfectly square so they're very very important but seemingly very small part of the caravan structure um, but i found this with every caravan that i've worked on is they add a lot of strength so they were um, quite a big part of finishing off the caravan and uh, secondly, to start with, I have moved on to the back seating area. I have now fixed the rear seat base in. You saw a small glimpse of it uh, in the last video. But it's now fixed and I've borrowed, oh, borrowed the uh, sliding seat top from a Sprite Musketeer from the mid 60s, which allows it to become a sliding bed. Um, I think in America they call it a Murphy bed. I'm not sure. No, that's the one that folds down. I don't know, a sliding bed anyway, we would call it um, a futon or something like that. So uh, I've managed to fit that 
and it works and there's a few bits and pieces to show you there but firstly i'm going to show you one of the best life hacks when it comes to keeping damp out of your caravan and it's something that the caravan industry in britain has been extremely slow to adopt it's only in the last maybe 10 or 15 years that i think every manufacturer now fits these as standard on their caravans and it's a draft board it's very very simple you can't quite see it on the camera here but there is a secondary board on the inside of the caravan placed about three quarters of an inch away from the wall and it just creates an air gap for the air to flow behind um, the cushion and what happens on caravans especially ones that have uh, glass windows like these they attract condensation and I've noticed even with no heat inside the caravan, the natural way in which the interior temperature of the caravan is different to the exterior temperature outside, even in the winter months, still causes condensation. You can't quite see on the camera, but there's plenty of condensation on the caravan this morning. There's no heat on in here at all. So um, the problem with this is it runs down the windows and it can pull up and run away. Or sometimes if the window is on an angle like the rear ones, it will drip down onto the upholstery. Now, this of course makes the upholstery damp and the upholstery will retain the water for significantly longer than the glass or the wood will. Um, nine times out of ten, it will run onto the wooden walls and it will just naturally evaporate very quickly, a tiniest amount if it, if it does. But the upholstery will retain it. And as I mentioned in the introduction, I, the, the caravan's been left for five months with the upholstery in it. And when I came to it, it, it felt damp, the back of the seat cushion. So I thought, that's it, there's nothing for it, must fit a draft board. Now, the great news is you can fit these in any caravan. It's a very easy job to do. Just requires a bit of uh, mathematical working out, I guess, to get all the wooden supports in the right place. And even better, if you're restoring the caravan and you know where the framework is, you can make a detailed drawing of it. So I'm just going to very quickly show you now um, how I created the draft board, because it is something that will really help you uh, with a vintage caravan or any caravan that doesn't have them to just improve the air circulation. And also, don't forget in the winter months, leave the cupboards open, the wardrobe open. If you can lift the bunks up, pull the cushions away from the wall, just increase the natural airflow inside the caravan and it will keep the moisture at bay. And every caravan from the last oh, 50 or 60 years at least has some degree of natural ventilation in it. And some are better than others. So we can help that as best we can. And also, if you're really fortunate to keep your caravan at home, just keep opening the door um, for a few hours on a nice winter's day or have a small amount of heating on very low. And um, you'd have seen in the previous videos that I really went to town with the insulation on the caravan and that's really helped, I think, this winter in keeping it dry. And I'm very pleased to report, no leaks, no water's getting in. Um, so, obviously done something right. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, without further ado, let me show you how I created the draft boards. I started by making a plan of the internal framework when I was doing the repairs to the back of the caravan. And I have cut the draft board using three millimeter plywood. Uh, it's very strong, it's very lightweight, and it just happens to be the same material that I've made the walls out of. It's very easy to cut with the multi-tool and get a very neat cut. I then carefully measure where the battens need to be placed. These are going to space it away from the wall and um, I have made sure that they hit the support buttons in the wall. These are all then glued using a very strong wood adhesive and screwed in place just for good measure. And then it's ready to put together and flip over and attach on the wall in the caravan. The screws for the battens show me where to screw through the whole piece into the wall of the caravan. And you find then that it's extremely strong and gives the required effect of allowing the air to circulate around the back of the seat cushion. Finally, using a small piece of paint that I had left over from the caravan, 
I'm just painting the board just to make it match. And uh, as usual, a uh, little reminder, when you're painting, you want something that is oil-based, um, not water-based or has acrylic in it, because the oil-based paint will allow the wood to breathe and not cause any mold issues. And of course, you need to brush it out in every direction to get rid of the brush marks. And there you have it. It's as simple as that. It's not a lot of effort, but it will really save your upholstery in the long run. Another piece that I put together while I was cutting this out was just the front shelf, which will sit above the kitchen in the caravan. Using the same technique and gluing it together, um, it just fits neatly above where the kitchen will sit. With a few bits of the interior done, uh, thoughts turn to the kitchen. And unfortunately, I've picked apart the original kitchen as much as I can. And the whole thing is just consumed with woodworm. Um, another issue with it is the design of it does not allow the fitting of a fridge or an oven. Um, it was a quirk of early sprites, which they didn't manage to rectify until 1964. So um, for me, these are Ovens maybe not as essential, but a fridge definitely is essential. So I decided to change the kitchen unit. And being strangely sentimental, I thought it has to be a Sprite one. So this particular unit is from a 1967 Sprite 400. And uh, I think the kitchen is a very difficult part for people to get right with a caravan renovation or even a new interior, because it is so easy to just keep adding and adding the weight. And on most caravans, it's fitted on one side of the caravan. And if you have too much weight in the kitchen, it will make the caravan lopsided as it's being towed, which will ruin the towing characteristics. So you'll find that most kitchens fitted in a caravan are actually not self-supporting. They rely on the wall and the floor um, to keep them upright. And the Sprite Kitchen is no exception. If we take a closer look uh, behind the scenes of the kitchen, if you like, um, you'll notice it's very, very thin, very small strips of wood. Um, it, it appears like a substantial piece of furniture, but it's actually oak faced entirely. Even the cupboard doors are hollow just to keep the weight down. This whole unit, minus any appliances, probably weighs no more than about 15 kilograms. And that is what you need to aim for. Uh, if you are replacing the kitchen in your caravan. So my advice really, I guess, was if you're planning a new kitchen, you start with an old one and change it and modify it. Here, um, Sprite made it very simple to fit the fridge. You just remove the door as they've done here on one side and the fridge simply slides in. Um, but a lot of caravan kitchens are much more complex than that. So I suggest really start with something that already exists and is a lightweight unit and then change it to suit what you're wanting to do. It just so happens that this piece of furniture matches the wardrobe that I've fitted. It came from the same donor caravan and the wood colour is right, although it does need refurbishing. And um, it, it has everything I need really uh, for the kitchen and the caravan. So I'm going to stick with it refurbish it and um, hopefully manage to fit it at the front of the caravan, uh, which is a change of position from the original. That is purely personal preference for me. As all of the original interior, it was far beyond salvage. It became a choice between replicating it for the sake of it or um, just creating something new that has the right period feel to it. To me, that's the most important thing. When people walk in the caravan, I want them to feel like they're in a 1950s or 60s caravan. So trying to keep painting things to a minimum and keeping as much of the original wood as possible and just really making it a pleasant place to be inside, I guess. So the kitchen's a good starting point. It's the focal point of the caravan in many cases and it's a difficult thing to get right. So we're going to take a look at the kitchen and how I managed to refurbish it and fit it in the caravan. Okay, so the first kind of uh, headache, I guess, or bump in the road um, that I've had for quite a while with this project is these kitchen worktops. Now, the original kitchen worktops for the kitchen um, 
nothing really wrong with them but they have a small pattern on them which i just think is, is too much in the caravan there's there's now too much of a contrast with all the different patterns we've got the flooring we've got the curtains and we don't need to add worktops into the equation uh, so i went out and i bought these um very cheap but they're crucially the exactly the right uh, diameter um pre-made laminate worktops and they're not very heavy because they're very thin. They're only about 16 millimeters tall, which is exactly the same as the original ones. So they all kind of fit perfectly with the kitchen. Now, the second problem is the whole kitchen has to move forward by about four inches away from the wall to allow for the curve of the front of the caravan. So what I've had to do is cut a strip for behind the kitchen worktops that matches. So the idea was that I would just replace everything so it just all matches and looks nice. However, the problem is, with all great intentions, um, cutting the laminate worktop is proving to be quite a problem because you get this little nibbling at the edge. Um, I've tried a circular saw, jigsaw and a multi-tool um, cutter and the multi-tool seems to get the best result for the top side but of course being a caravan worktop it hinges up so you're going to see the damaged underside and I think it's just one of those things that I'm going to have to try and disguise and live with um, asking around a few people with connections to the trade when they used to do folding worktops in caravans which of course they generally don't anymore um, the underside would be a separate piece of laminate that was stuck on after to eliminate this problem and of course when you cut a worktop in a house the underside doesn't matter so the problem is because I'm trying to be too clever here and have these hinging worktops it's just not working in my favour. <laughs> so I've been patient. I've even used uh, masking tape. That's another tip when you're cutting something fragile that you don't want to fray and split. Use masking tape um, just to help guide the cut, I guess. Um, that hasn't worked either. It worked a little bit, but still not great. So I'm going to push on with the kitchen worktops and it might just be that I have to just um, finish it off by hand with little dabs of paint and disguise it as best as possible of course i've got the edging strips to go on as well that might help i don't know um i guess i'll just have to see what i can do and if i'm really not happy with it then i will have to start again and perhaps find some new work tops um maybe even make some who knows but this uh, video and this project just got a whole lot longer i was hoping to have it kind of wrapped by today for the kitchen and get the filming ready but um not looking like times on my side so let's see what we can do another little thing that's really tried my patience is the uh, pull cord on the light um decided to undo itself and, and and snap at the point so i had to take all the light apart and fit them and it's a specialist kind of nylon cord um which of course i couldn't manage to thread through the light switch and i learned that the trick is to just burn the ends of it slightly with a lighter or a match um just just to make it go hard enough to push through the hole to be able to thread it. Um, another job that took like half an hour and it, to me in my head it would take five minutes but just goes to show that when you're restoring a caravan you've got to be on your feet all the time because it's going to throw these little things at you and you least expect it and it's one thing to get up in the morning and think right today I'm going to get x y and z done. Um, the caravan will be done when it is ready to be done I am learning so um, it's a bit frustrating. But there we go, I've managed to fix it at least and it's all working again and we have both lights working as they were before. And finally it came to me the answer of how to get the clean cut on the worktop and what I did was I cut from both sides, um, the top side first and then the underside and met in the middle using the multi-tool cutter because you just have a bit more control and the gentle oscillating action of the blade um, seems to be what's stopping the worktop from um, splitting and chipping at the edges as it's being cut. So yes, it took me like four times as long to cut it, just being very, very patient. But I have an absolutely perfect straight line with no chips, no breaks in the worktop. And I am well pleased with that. So there's the answer. If you're cutting worktops for a caravan and you want both sides to be clean and not got any chips or damage in them, cut from both sides using the masking tape, of course, um, and meet in the middle and you'll get a clean finish. So there we go. My uh, 
Looks like I have half an engineering brain after all. <laughs> so that's where we're at with the Sprite Aerial and uh, I hope you've enjoyed watching. It's been really warming for me over the last few months, the number of messages of support and people asking where have you gone and what are you doing and asking about the caravan. I had no idea when I started the YouTube channel back in about April, I think, 2020, that this would grow into such a big community of people who are just so interested in what I have to say about old caravans. <laughs> so thank you very much. I love reading all the comments below and I try to reply to them all and I'm getting a bit better, I hope, with social media and um, interacting with everyone. And I'm really, really thankful for everyone's involvement and the support on the project so far. So I've been filming lots of content all summer in amongst doing things with the house and some pretty big things planned for Not Another White Box in 2021. But uh, you'll have to wait and see what they are. So make sure you subscribe and um, you can follow me on social media, on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Um, Not Another White Box on all of those. And uh, thank you so much for watching. See you in the next video.